Robin, for any actor who wants to be a working actor in Hollywood, what are some things that they need to know about not just the business, but also themselves? You have to have a good sense of yourself and a good thick skin. It's very odd that an actor needs to be able to shed that skin immediately and be able to be vulnerable and express uh, feelings. But you must have thick skin because you are going, you're not going to get more jobs than you do get. Even the most famous actors, the ones you think work all the time, don't get every job they want. And uh, as a working actor, we working actors um, don't get more jobs than we do. So you have to know that. You just have to know that. And then you have to um, act. I encourage, alas, equity is making this a little more difficult for equity actors, but, if, but you have to perform. So find a class to go to that keeps your, your uh, uh, instrument lubricated and working. So, you know, you're not going in and trying to read for Macbeth after not doing anything for, you know, six months um, or doing, you know, serial commercials. You have to, so f find a workshop, someplace where you can work and do scenes and scene study and that sort of thing. Be very careful of becoming a professional student. A lot of people come here and take, start taking classes and, they, and that satisfies them in a way. You know, being, you know, doing, even doing really good work in class is not the same as working. And so uh, it, it, you have to do that work in order to be able to be good enough to land work. So um, you have to um, get on stage as, as often as you can. There are lots of little theaters here that do plays. Again, equities. If you're not equity, you can do that. If you are equity, you have to do some workarounds to get that happening now, alas. But, um, but get on stage as much as you can so you're l warmed up. Um, you should always, before you go out on an audition, you should be as prepared as you can possibly be. But for yourself, again, this is not so much about the audition, but for the person, uh, go somewhere in public before you uh, go to the audition. Don't, because you, sh you need to, you're a human who is trying to display human emotions. And if you make this audition the most important thing of your day, that this is, you're getting ready for this, I can't do anything before this, I have to do this, this is it, this is the focus, the focus, the focus. Then you get in the room and you're not limber. Yeah. You know, so I always try to go and have a cup of coffee or pick up my dry cleaning or chat with, you know, somebody, go get something from the market, do something. So I'm limber and I've, I've, I've had a conversation with someone before I'm having my first conversation with you, the casting director who holds my future in your hands. Um, so that's one thing that I think is very important. And then on the flip side of that, at the end of the audition, go somewhere, fun, reward yourself. You know, have something to look forward to. Because a lot of times if you go in, you can tell, you can read the room whether, you go, whether they received you well or not. You can't always tell because there have been times when I've gone in and thought that I stunk up the room and got a call a few hours later saying I booked a job. So you can't really judge by that. But, um, but if, it, if you've made the audition or the interview the most important moment of your day, then you're very likely to feel this huge letdown at the end of it, or this artificial sort of stiffness at the beginning of it because you haven't been a person, you know? I so, love that. That's excellent. So th those, yeah. I think, are the most important things because everybody has different levels of talent, so, you know, I can't really speak to that, but, but those things, you have to understand that you're not going to get more jobs than you do. You have to understand that nobody gets your job. You get your job and uh, never talk about having lost a job when it was only an audition. You didn't lose anything. You can't lose anything you didn't have. And, and go out somewhere before the audition to limber up and have somewhere fun to go after the audition to celebrate because you went to work. I absolutely love that in terms of interacting with people, yeah. losing that sort of social phobia that yes. we all, because we're all in a hurry yeah. and we're like, well, I don't have much time and there's going to be traffic. And now LA is a little more crowded than it right. used to be. So we're even more like dialed in on just going directly to where we used to, but like go somewhere fun, like Trader Joe's and exactly. pick up something. Yeah, just right. where it's Chat with the guys yeah. or the girls or something, right. just make something have, live, you know, do something to get yourself personized again. You right, know? right.
instead of focused on the job. Let's talk about once you get the job, how should one conduct themselves on set, even if they're just they're just they have a scene where they're going to cross in front of the camera, or they have several lines of dialogue. First of all, uh, the crew is are, is usually comprised of real people who are not full of themselves and are willing <laughs> to share information with you. You know, meet your AD who's going to tell you where the dressing rooms are, and be nice to the craft service person, and be nice to everyone. But here's one thing that you must know for sure. If someone of the regular cast is nice to you um, and reaches out to you, it will be a rarity. I am amazed at the number of people who have every reason to be kind and open to the guest stars or co-stars who come on the show who won't even give them the time of day. Mm -hmm. And so just don't expect it. Mm -hmm. Don't expect that. You be nice. Take care of yourself. You be kind. If someone is nice and sweet to you, be nice and sweet back, but don't try to suddenly become their best friend because that's just going to backfire on you in a major way. Yeah. And um, uh, ask questions. Feel free to ask questions if you need to ask questions. But uh, don't expect that you are going to be embraced into the company because it doesn't happen very often. I'm, I'm unless it's my show, because I make sure that I do that, because I know how difficult it can be to be the day player on a set or the one in for three days or something. And um, I've always made it a point to welcome, I think that's probably the theater thing again, the, you know, the pot of chili and the glass of wine concept. Um, but that's what they should do. And be on time, always be on time. Um, it's a good idea to bring a, a magazine or a book and a comfy pillow with you, have a little set bag, because you spend a lot of time waiting and you want to be comfortable when you do. And most of the trailers or dressing rooms don't have a comfy pillow or reading material for you to pass the time with, you know. Um, if you have any kind of special dietary needs or uh, prohibitions make take care make sure you take care of yourself in that regard bring your bring a snack or two that fits those things and be prepared to wait and um, and check you know go, if you feel like you've been waiting a really long time and you're kind of losing the edge check with your ad and and find out if uh, you know how was it likely you know, can you give me an ETA I'd like 15 minutes before you need me, if at all possible. You may not be able to get that 15 minutes, but that's why you say, if at all possible, and you could remember, I'd love to, just so I can pump up, you know, for when it's time to go. And, um, and know your lines, and, uh, and, you know, be prepared to enjoy yourself and do a good job. I like what you said too about you know be friendly but not trying to be someone's best friend right. and then on the flip side knowing that people that oh I can't wait to work with so and so and know that they may not see you and not being hurt perfectly said you know because yes. I think there's like this armor we have to wear and I think you learn it after a few years of being here but when you're new especially you get really it's easy to get hurt yeah. or it's easy to become someone's best friend right away and then find out you never hear from them again. Right, right. <laughs> You're shocked. Right. But yeah, can you talk about that armor? And it's not being a mean person, it's just being protective. Yeah, but I also, it's not being a mean person, but I, I, you are more generous than I in this regard. I find that it is, that they are not being a conscious person. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, if you don't, if you can't say, hello, welcome to the show. Yeah. Nice to have you. Um, now, one of the reasons they may not do that is because when they have done that, the newbie has decided that, oh, now she's my best friend. <laughs> I'm going to talk to her. Right. We're going to have lunch together and everything. And, and that person wants, you know, get off of me. You know, right. I don't, I'm, I'm just, maybe they're protecting themselves because they've done this before and, sure. and it kind of backfired on them in a way that they didn't want to have to deal with. True. However, it is easy to take a moment to welcome someone to your show, to, to be kind to them, to have an, a nice word, because we are all doing it together. Everybody is in the same boat, you know? 
you have a better seat perhaps than I do if you're the regular on the show, but we're in the same boat and we're all actors and performers. So I find that, I find that sort of treatment. I, I, I was doing an episode of, uh, and so she was, while the makeup lady was doing her makeup, her face was down like this in her cell phone the whole time. She didn't speak to anyone. She didn't say, now she may be a perfectly lovely girl. I worked with her for a week. She seemed very nice on the set. Um, but be, if I use that as an example of how you as a guest star or co-star should be, or any star should be on the show, is that the people that are there, the makeup, the hair, they're not your servants. They are professionals who are doing their job. Treat them with dignity and with respect because they have control over how you look. You're allowed to say, I prefer to have my hair blown forward rather than blown back, or I'd like to have it up if possible, blah, blah, blah. You can tell them what it is you want, but do it as though you are te speaking to a professional and say please and thank you and be a conscious human being. Right. You know, don't, they're not your staff. Sure.